So here we are in my outdoor workspace. I do all things concrete. That space over there, pretty messy. <laughs> no work over here. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I'm getting ready to show you is how to make one of these large concrete gnomes. Uh, to set out in your yard. I think gnomes are really cute and they're pretty popular for sure. And the smaller gnomes are great to put in your little indoor gardens or on your patio garden. But sometimes I want to be able to know there's a gnome across the yard. And so to have a larger gnome uh, available that you can see across the yard is kind of fun. So that's what we're going to learn how to do today. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to get started. We're going to go through each step, show you the materials I'm using. So first of all, this is what I'm going to be using. Is that backwards? <laughs> it is. Re fast set repair mortar. Uh, high performance cement by Quickcrete. Fast set repair mortar. It looks like this. Uh, this is a, a mortar that is meant for vertical use. So it's going to uh, not slouch on you too much and going to be nice to be able to build up that way. It's pretty fast setting, so that's always nice too. I don't know about you, but I'm not very patient. So as we get this mixed up, of course, safety. I've got my gloves on. I've actually got two layers of gloves here, and then I'm going to put on a heavier pair of latex gloves. These are for my fine sculpting, um, so I don't have to keep taking off and putting on different gloves. I just kind of layer them. So I've got two layers here and then I'm going to put on some of those yellow latex gloves. And of course my goggles and my mask for when I am mixing the this cement mix so it doesn't slosh all over the place. Once it's mixed, right, um, just being careful. You can continue to wear your goggles if you like, but you certainly don't want to be inhaling or having that dust in your eyes. I know sometimes it gets behind my contact lenses and it's a little tricky. So anyway, let's get started. What I've got going first is I've got a tomato cage. There it is. And I've taken a tomato cage and I have wrapped it in just regular old chicken wire. I have used rebar wire to um, make sure that it's fastened really well. And I am now going to dip fabric pieces into that cement mix and coat this whole thing in a cement coated fabric that's going to be my base all right got the tomato cage all covered in wire i have my uh got a little turntable set up here use a plant stand on wheels and a piece of floor tile covered in plastic to be my turntable so i can spin them around after a while he's going to get a little heavy to move even though he's going to be hollow. So, here we are. I have my cement mix here. Uh, pretty soft. And I don't know. It's pretty soft in here. So it can coat the, the fabric. And it's still kind of wet and sloshy. <laughs> so, I'm wearing my goggles. And you can use um, old fabric, old towels. My husband prefers I use all of my old towels because I tend to save them and use them in the house. They still have, you know, absorption to them. Why throw them away? But he wants to get rid of them. So I will use those or old clothes that I cut up. But sometimes I get these uh, handy white things at the 99 cent store and they work pretty well and I don't have to go to all that time to cut up fabric or use perfectly good towels. I don't know what that's about. So anyway, I'm going to soak these handy wipes or any of the fabric that you're using. I've used old burlap, I've used old tablecloths that aren't useful anymore. Any fabric soaked in the cement will work. And I just began wrapping the chicken wire in the fabric. I've got this little guy, I've got his hat kind of tilted a little bit. I want him to have a kind of a little slouchy hat and so um, that's why he's tipped a little bit and you can make yours however you want. So I'm just going to continue and I'm working pretty quickly because again this is fast setting <laughs> uh, cement here. I'm so happy that some of you have asked to see uh, these processes. I know there's a lot of YouTubes out there that have wonderful uh, cement creators. And I know I have certainly learned from watching all of them 
uh, do their work. I've learned different techniques and different ways of doing things yeah. with different products too. I'm using what I have found to be successful for myself to create what I want to create. This is coming along really nicely. I like using these handy wipes because they're a nice size. They're not too heavy and they go on and you can put as many coats of the handy wipes on that you wish to. So you can see how this um, mix just sticks to itself. It's I'm not having to do much to, to keep it up there. Uh, it's, it's starting to set and so it's going to hold really nicely. I get super excited when things aren't that are too fiddly. That kind of takes the fun out of it for me. And I want it to be pretty quick, easy to do, not too much precision. I'm not great with that precision thing. So. I also don't have too many of my own really deep creative thoughts. <laughs> I do uh, tend to swipe other people's ideas and tweak them, so I hope that maybe that's what you're going to be able to do here. This was one of my original thoughts, so I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> the techniques are not original, but the uh, the project, pretty original for myself. I'm going to take these big clunky gloves off right now and get down to my next layer. I have a hard time wearing gloves. Kind of like my daddy. He's always a he's electric. He was an electrician and did a little woodwork here and there, some metal work here and there. Anything my daddy did, he he didn't wear gloves. He just he had to be able to feel the work and and know where things are just by by feel and look. And I think that's kind of how I work a little bit too. So wearing gloves is kind of tricky for me, but with um, some of these supplies we're using, we really need to use the, the gloves. So there we are. He's got his first layer on, and that's that's just the process. In a while, as this as this sets, I'm going to then have a thicker batch of this mortar that I'm going to put on again to kind of get rid of all of the little handy wipe uh, creases and patches to make it one solid look and then we will move on with the next step okay so I'm just going to continue doing this you don't want to watch all of that so <laughs> we'll be back all right so I'm continuing to put different layers on the gnome and I'm ready to start putting some of the features on. There's his nose. So depending on the height of your gnome and where you want all of his features to be, you can determine where you want his nose. This is just a styrofoam ball that I have run a wire through and attached it to uh, my little gnome guy here before he got too set and hard. And so I've measured about 15 inches down from the top of his cap to his nose. I like that look, so that's what I'm going with. So now what I'm going to do is again with my handy dandy handy wipes, I'm going to go ahead and coat that nose and secure him into place, like so. And this is kind of the fun thing of um, demonstrating and showing. I'm I'm not teaching you the the way to do it. No, I'm giving you some thoughts, some examples hopefully some inspiration um, to go out and give it a try if you're into 3D art like I am and uh, you've run out of space in your house for some artwork and you can't give any more to your family members and you still have this passion to create so this is why I've moved out into yard art. <laughs> Here we are. We've got our gnome nose in place there so now we know where we're going to want to put our eyes and for the eyes I like to use the uh, glass gems 
You don't have to, you could use, make concrete eyes if you want to, but I really like using the little glass pebbles. Um, it just brings them to life because it's they shine and they sparkle in the light and they just kind of make them have some life. So I will always use those for um, facial features for these little guys. So there we go. And then I want to make sure that I'm going to place my uh, brim of my hat in the right place. So I will also put a guide on here. So I'll, this is what's going to begin my hat. Help me again with the placement of those eyes and just kind of start helping me have a good vision of where he is. I'm also going to need to add some hands out here. Remember, we're going to do that too. So we're just going to keep moving, okay? This is just to give me an idea of how I want that hat to go later on. Of course, we're going to add more cement and sculpt it out. This is just my uh, just my form here. <laughs> so he he's just setting so nicely. I love this because he sets as we go. We can just keep adding. Okay, so now I'm placing the hand the armature for the hand. So I've just used uh, aluminum foil uh, from Dollar Tree and some of the fencing wire or the rebar wire and I've run it through the foil and now I've stuck it inside my little gnome guy here and I'm going to reach up inside and twist that wire together so it will stay in place. at this stage um, the mortar I'm working with look it's it's pretty stiff and so it's it's like a clay now and I can mold it and put it where I want it to to go to hold everything in place right now again this is just holding it later we'll put on all of the features. Okay, so this is where he starts kind of coming to life a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit here again on his nose. Kind of build that up. This is more <laughs> giving you cake decorating. This is more of an icing uh, texture right now. <laughs> so it just smooths on like so. Do what you know, right? His beard, his beard will begin at his nose and go all the way down. And uh, what do we use for I'm using beard. this? Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can just continue to add cement and sculpt the cement. You can do that. Uh, you can use old rags, whatever. Uh, it's just trying to get the beard shape. So I use this because it's kind of fun. It gives me... Um, uh, a pretty good base of how I want the beard to look like. You won't see all of these strands when the beard is done, as you've seen on, as you'll see on the completed little gnome. But uh, this is where I start, so you can really use anything to get your beard base there. Okay. So when he is set, uh, before we paint him, we will actually add cement to the inside. Um, and cover the, the chicken wire and the armature on the inside, which will add more thickness here. So we don't have to go super thick on the outside. to some Dollar Tree sculpting tools, plastic spoons, knives, and paint brushes. I don't know, 
whatever you think you need to get these facial features where you want them to be. My little gnomes always have a big, fat, cheesy smile and hopefully some good uh, expression in their eyes. You can see I've got my blue uh, glass pebbles set right where I want them and I'm going to build his eyebrows and his smile and his, and his expression all around those little glass pebbles. So here we go. Kind of like us ladies, we don't want our faces to sag, we have to put our foundation on with a stroke up. <laughs> so that our faces don't sag. I'm going to put toes on this little guy, so I'm going to start working on that. I'm going to let that set just a little bit, and then we're going to um, build up some toes on it. While we're waiting that for that to set, we're going to work on our hands again. So, as you can see, I'm moving from one area of the body to another as, um, as he sets. Isn't he handsome? <laughs> All right, let's get the hands made here. I've been out here playing all morning. Got about an hour before I need to get back to my actual job for this afternoon. So um, what we're gonna do now is begin adding the uh, whiskers to the little gnome here. We're gonna add his beard on here and then I'm going to go ahead and shape the basket across his hands. I need to put the beard on the front first. First I'm going to give a little spray of water There, our cement's still pretty damp, but set, so it's going to be pretty easy. And I've got all of my, look, here they are, going right into my little tub of cement. So we're just going to get it all soaky, soggy in the cement, and then we're just going to put them on a couple of whiskers at a time. Fill it all in and uh, go from there. me to go back in to go to work. So tomorrow, maybe tonight after work, I don't have a commute, I'm working from home today, this basket. Uh, I'll finish some sides, but we're going to leave the bottom, we're going to leave the bottom empty and I'm actually going to put screen in there so that it doesn't hold water and the bird seeds will hold in there, but it won't collect water there. So here he is.
Okay, here we are, Saturday morning. Uh, this little guy I worked on earlier in the week. Here he is. He's all set and he's ready to paint. <laughs> That's a fun part because you get to really start adding the personality and the little character traits and all of the fun stuff there. So I'm just gonna work on this little guy today, get him painted up, set him in my backyard for my husband. <laughs> I go over these little guys with um, a little sanding before I go, go ahead and do the painting. For some of the more rough areas that are places I want to knock off some bigger pieces, I use, I actually use an old uh, piece of, um, I don't know, what is that? Um, cinder block, it's broken. So these make a nice little sanding block for parts of it. And I like to use these sanding sponges as well. Just give them a, a good sanding all over, get all the really hard rough edges off. But he is concrete, he's meant to have some, um, some texture to him. So do what you want, take him all the way down to super fine or leave a little texture there. I'm using a variety of acrylic paints. Um, I like this outdoor, this is actually front door paint. I actually have Art Minds outdoor exterior paint. So uh, a really good durable acrylic paint. And I'm also going to go over him with um, an acrylic, clear acrylic finish as well. So this will help him stand up um, here in my backyard through the sprinklers and the summer heat of here in Arizona. Although I do not stick them out in direct sunlight for, you know, hours and hours on end. So I'm pretty selective where I put some of my creations in my yard. Um, certainly they're going to be in the sun part of the day, but if we can find places in our yards where they're going to be also protected. If you're in areas of the country that have, um, of course, lots of snow, ice, uh, things like that, you would certainly want to bring those, uh, bring your creations in through that weather so that the moisture doesn't absorb in. You know what uh, that kind of weather does to your streets and sidewalks, it's going to do the same thing to your artwork. So um, just kind of taking care, it's concrete, but it's not impervious to deterioration. <laughs> so take a little care there. Okay, so you can see I've got the hat painted and I've got little birds painted. There we go. I'm using blue and purple on there to get me the uh, look and the highlights that I would like to do. I wanted to show um, how I'm going to go ahead and do the beard. It sounds scary, but trust me, this will work. <laughs> All right, so what I've done is I've taken some water and put in some black acrylic paint. So I've thinned it super duper thin. So it's like an ink and I'm just gonna keep stirring it until it gets completely dissolved in this water. And so it's just a wash. And what I wanna do with this, um, some of you that already know these techniques, you know what I'm doing, but if there's anybody out there that's looking to do this project and isn't familiar with some painting techniques, um, I'm just going to use this wash. I'm going to do the all of the beard, the whole beard in this black wash. And what that does, it's going to get all down inside the crevices. And then I'm going to go over it with a dry brush of white, which is going to make those beard whiskers pop out. And it's all going to look amazing. I promise. Trust me. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we've got him. All of his whiskers are painted black. 
scary, but it's okay. It'll be okay. It's okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> so I get these little chip brushes at the Dollar Tree. You can get two for a dollar. And um, I'm just going to do this process called dry brushing. So I'm not going to use any water. I'm just going to use my white paint straight out of the, um, out of the container. I've got, again, it's, uh, this is Art Mines outdoor acrylic paint that I'm going to be using and I'm just going to do this dry brush method so just kind of watch and see if you can pick up the technique um, again I don't know all about this it's what works for me it's how I do it so I'm just going to show it to you okay here we go So not a lot of paint on the brush, and it's just this nice side motion. And you just keep going over and over and over until you get the effect that you want. It's pretty easy, and you can see that you're getting the definition in the hair back here that you want to have. And that's the process. Just keep going over it and over it and over it until you get it as white or as not white as you want it. It's really up to you. That's the fun with creating. That's the fun with art. There's not one way to do it. And guess what? If it doesn't turn out right, paint it all over and start again. All right, here we are. We've got the white on getting heavy. I'll move your hand this way. And again, you can make this as white or not white as you like. So I'm getting ready to start my favorite part, of course. I'm getting ready to start the face. I'm going to start putting in his eyebrows, getting the facial features, the colors and shading I want. We'll do his hands, toes. Finish today. It's going to be very exciting. <laughs> Here we go. Here he is, all finished in my backyard. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were inspired. Hope you'll try some creations of your own. Have a great day.